But now let us pass to the first point. From what source then shall we verify our proofs? Not, of course, from our own scriptures, lest we should seem to show favor to our argument, but let Greeks themselves appear as our witnesses, both those of them who boast of their philosophy, and those who have investigated the history of other nations. Well then, in recording the ancient theology of the Egyptians from the beginning, Diodorus, the Sicilian, leads the way, a man thoroughly known to the most learned of the Greeks as having collected the whole library of history into one treatise. From him I will set forth first what he has clearly stated in the beginning of his work concerning the origin of the whole world, while recording the opinion of the ancients in the manner following. The ancients worshipped no other gods than the celestial luminaries, knowing nothing of the god of the universe, nor even of the erection of carved images, nor of demons. It is said then that the men who dwelled of old in Egypt when they looked up to the cosmos, and were struck with astonishment and admiration at the nature of the universe, supposed that the sun and moon were two eternal and primal gods, one of whom they named Osiris, and the other Isis, each name being applied from some true etymology. For when they are translated into the Greek form of speech, Osiris is many-eyed, with reason, for casting his beams in every direction he beholds, as it were with many eyes, the whole earth and sea, and with this the poet's words agree. Thou sun, who all things sayest, and nearest all. But some of the ancient mythologists among the Greeks gave to Osiris the additional name Dionysus, and by a slight change in the name, Sirius. One of these, Eumolpus, speaks in his back sheet poems thus. Dionysus named, bright as a star, his face aflame with rays. And Orpheus says, for that same cause fans and Dionysus him they call. Some say also that the fawn skin cloak is hung about him as a representation of the spangling of the stars. Isis too, being interpreted, means ancient, the name having been given to the moon from her ancient and eternal origin. And they put horns upon her, both from the aspect with which she appears whenever she is crescent-shaped, and also from the cow which is consecrated to her among the Egyptians. And these deities are supposed to regulate the whole world. Such then are the statements on this subject. You find, too, in the Phoenician theology, that their first physical philosophers knew no other gods than the sun, the moon, and besides these the planets, the elements also, and the things connected with them and that to these the earliest of mankind consecrated the productions of the earth, and regarded them as gods, and worshipped them as the sources of sustenance to themselves and to following generations, and to all that went before them, and offered to them drink offerings and libations. But pity and lamentation and weeping they consecrated to the produce of the earth when perishing, and to the generation of living creatures at first from the earth, and then to their production one from another, and to their end when they departed from life. These notions of worship were in accordance with their own weakness, and the want as yet of any enterprise of mind. Such are the statements of the Phoenician writings, as will be proved in due course.